Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Zero to 60. Today we have this fabulous F30 M Sport BMW and we're going to take it for a good drive, put it through its paces, see how nice these F30s are and then see how fast it does zero to 60. I'm looking forward to it, so let's get into it. Welcome back to Zero to 60. Today, we are in an F30 320D. Yeah, and it's a bloody nicely specced M30. Sorry, F30 <laughs> M3. <320D. laughs> I wish it was an M3. We've kind of been talking about how much we want an F80 M3 off camera. Yeah, but as you, if you have seen any of our previous videos, you probably know we are BMW fans anyway. So being able to jump into the F30 generation is, regard is pretty awesome. Yeah, and we both kind of are really impressed. Um, if you follow the channel, you know we spent a lot of time in the E-Series models, both the E65 series and the E90, E92 E93s. And um, the E39 5s. And the E39s, yes. This is definitely a step up in luxury and refinement to what we're used to. Um, and the reason we wanted to film this car, the diesels, I know they're not that cool, but they're relevant. And they are more popular. What we were just saying before, how it's relatively nice, even though this is a 320 diesel, just because it's that F generation, it is such a nice car to be in. It is. I uh, David hasn't a chance to drive this yet, but you will have a, a quick pedal before we finish up for the day. But just driving it around briefly around town, the steering is a lot lighter, which I know, again, that's not about necessarily getting good feedback or driving involvement, but it's an easier car to plot around town in. It's just, yeah. it's just a nice, effortless thing to drive. And speaking of plotting around town, something that is obviously a benefit of having the turbo diesel model is the fuel consumption. It's crazy. This is averaging 5.9. Now, I, I don't know when the owner last reset his trip meter, um, but I'm guessing it was a long time. Yeah, I'm gonna guess not. So, so that is a genuine 5.9 liters per 100. Yeah. And it goes all right. It's no, I'll tell you, I, I was kind of expecting it to feel faster than the E90 320 diesels, and we've tested two on the, the channel now. Yes, but they don't feel bad either. They are quite talky. They, they surprise you with the talk, and maybe that's affected our perception on how this was gonna feel. Um, yeah, it, it sort of pulls very, very similarly. One thing that is a huge, well, actually, let's talk about the torque. While we're talking about what it goes like, it is 135 kilowatts. Yeah, around 135 kilowatts. Which and is 190 ish horsepower for you guys yeah, and the rest of the world. Under the 200. Uh, and torque's around 380, I think. 380. Which that's a fair bit of torque. And for a little, for a little engine. But also, this sort of power range, I mean, this was hot hatch power 10 years ago. Yeah, good point. It's, just, <laughs> it's now family diesel sedan power. Um, something that is really good, and I think which is a lot to do with why I'm like driving it, is it has got the ZF 8 speed. It is my favorite gearbox in the world. In the world. Yeah. But they are good, and that probably helps with fuel consumption and its drivability around town, and hopefully also it's zero to 100 time. And actually, just with the fuel economy, this um, ZF 8 speed was the first time an automatic gearbox was supposed to be more economical than a petrol, uh, sorry, than a manual. That was this. I got distracted then because the GoPro has just fallen off the it's screen. Broken. We are using yeah. a bodged up mount. I'll let Dave reattach that. We are the gypsies of YouTube. Oh, we got police up here. Hold on. What is going on? Maybe I shouldn't attach that. I'd say the uh, traffic lights are out, but there are no traffic lights there. Yeah. unusual. Anyway, back to the car. Um, yeah, ZF8 speed, wonderful gearbox, very economical vehicle. Dave, now, would you own one? I like spending money on unreliable, older, cooler, big engine, more powerful cars. Yep. But when you jump in this, you just can't deny that it's better. Yeah. It's nicer. For a daily, that sort of thing. I think it is. This, it's probably it doesn't feel as quick as your 540, but it might not be far off. Yeah, that's the thing. The way it puts its power down, it's more efficient. That's and, and again, with that ZF8, compared to my old school ZF5, it's gonna be much more efficient um, and stay in its power band for much longer going through the, going through its acceleration. 
I think, um, and again, if you, uh, for a girlfriend's car or something that you'd get in every now and again. Yes, this perfect. is huge up on the list of things I'd consider. Um, now on to what we do with our videos. We've got to go and see how fast it does in the real world. Now these were a factory claim, 7.4 on the zero to 100 km an hour race. Now we have to warn people about this. This is, those times will be one person in the car, good tires, good surface. Obviously they will put some effort into getting those times. We have two people in the car, and this car's done 115,000 kilometers, so it's not a brand new vehicle. No, and we're on a real world road surface. So please don't have a meltdown if it's slower than what BMW said it was gonna be. It's gonna be slower, cars always are. Um, just driving around, I, th I think, it's, it's throwing me off, because I don't think it feels much quicker than the E90s, and they were around 8.3. The re, I think, was the best time we got in an E90 320 diesel. Uh, it was, and that was that was a surprising car actually. That that was an LCI 320D. So, is it going to be quicker than that with this better gearbox? I hope so. What do you guys reckon it's going to do? Do you think this is going to get close to its factory time in the real world test, or is it going to be up there with the old E90s? I'll put a poll because I want people interacting. We've got to get people interacting. We'll put a poll. Hit that poll. We're going to set the cameras up and we'll go and do some time runs. Let's do it. So we are out in the highly specced F30 320D and I'm quietly confident it feels nippy. It does. And not being mega power, it might get close to its factory time. On, I don't think we're going to have any traction issues with this weapon. No, I'm going to go straight to Sports Plus. Sport Plus, which is traction off, isn't it? picks up straight away. It is, it's a certain level of traction off. I don't think it's full DSC off. Limited driving stabilization. Yeah, that's okay. Right, that's all right. But uh, yeah, we're gonna come around to the 100 zone. We're gonna give it a crack. Um, feeling good, feeling good. It's gonna be full auto. It's probably gonna be one of the easiest zero to 100 runs we do. Leave it in D and just plan yeah. it. I'm not, oh, I'm not gonna do a full stall. I think I'll stall it to probably 1500. Okay. Well, that should, should be in plenty of torque then. Are we ready? Shifting nicely. Let me know when we get to 100. Cool. That was 8.23. Miles off. We'll try and get another 0 to 100 in here. Okay, wait a second. Cool. Bit more of an aggressive launch. Didn't wheel spin that. No, time. it just takes it. But I did hold it on for a bit longer. I'll just do the hundred this time. Eight point three nine. It's a bit slower. All right, we got one more running up. So she's about half a second off factory so far. Should we try it with full traction off? Yeah, let's do full traction just, off. Yeah, just in case it is limiting, limiting its power to the ground. DSC is now off. You are in control of this beast. <laughs> Dangerous with all this 190 horsepower, I think they have. Right, let me know when we're ready. We're good. Nah, that's about the same. It's about the same, yeah. I don't know. It might be less actually. 8.3. So very, very similar. Very consistent. Yeah. But again, it's, it's right on the same ballpark. But yeah, because the shifts are a bit funny, I think it... The ZF8 is weird. They are crazy because it feels like you're in sixth gear by the time you're doing 100Ks. All right. Oh, got to agree with you. It just goes through the gears so quick. Okay. So many gears. Ready? Yep. No. No launch control. No launch control. Last try. We are flat out, though. It's, it really doesn't break traction like I thought it would. Ooh. Got a bit quicker. 8.05. Damn. That's interesting. All right. This is definitely going to be the last 8 .05. run. 8.05. I'm going to try and get a bit more spool, a bit more of a stall up. I'm going to drive it like I drive the petrol turbos. Oh, it broke traction then. It did. But it probably hold it back. It is funny how relaxed you can be in a car <laughs> with a little bit less power than you used to. Okay. Oh, I could have gone for the 60 to 120 then. Oh, oh well. What did we get on the 100? It was 8.42. So it was similar Slower. to all the other times, yeah. All the wheel spin. All right, let's get these cameras switched around and we'll see you guys in a second. 
I love those seatbelt pretensionists. The, um, that is something you don't get in the E90s. No, no, definitely not. But, runs are done, and that wasn't too bad. 8.04, 8.05, I think. So, about half a second off what BMW claimed, which is a smaller margin than we see on petrol BMWs. Most, most cars, really. Um, but about 0.3 of a second faster than the E90 320 diesel. Yeah, the LCI as well. So, so she, she is quicker. Yeah, and that's really got to come down to the to that gearbox. But one thing I will say over the E90, this car feels a lot more refined, and I think it it, it feels more prestigious. It does, doesn't it? One hundred percent. It is a nicer car to be in. The this nice element. Well, this is an M Sport as well, so it is spec. It, it is quite highly spec. But some of the toys and gadgets you get with it, you just you can't get in an E90 series. No, you feel, I don't know if the proper wording is ergonomics or whatever, but the way that the dash slants away, you feel like you're in a bigger cabin. Things like the door bins being bigger, that's awesome. Yeah, you fit a full size bloody litre bottle. Yeah, in there. The aluminium dash is nice, mixed with the piano black. Cool. It, do, it does feel like a big step up from the E90, and even the um, when you put it in reverse before, or the different camera angles you get rather than just a one one straight behind you. That was pretty nice. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, price-wise though, these are, we had a quick look at what these are selling for. Um, and the cheapest one in Australia at the moment is 22,000. Now, was that an M Sport? It was an M Sport, but it still didn't seem quite feature packed as this particular vehicle that we're in. This is very highly spec on, definitely. Yeah, but you still get the cool M Sport seats. Um, yeah, still the it was the same color interior, which is probably got to be one of my got to be my favorite interior color for the BMs. Yes. Did you happen to notice what they went up to price range? Uh, well, in, in, into the thirties. So that you can still spend a fair chunk of money, which makes them a fair bit more expensive than an E ninety. However, I think if you're looking for a car around the twenty, it's definitely worth trying to stretch into this because it, it's a significantly different car to an E ninety. And like we said just before, it's definitely more prestigious, don't you think? Oh, 100%. It, yeah, there's no doubt about it. And yeah, what you were saying before about for a, a car for your significant other, it's it's hard to beat because you'd happily jump in this and drive to Brisbane if you had to. Yeah. Um, yeah, fuel, it hardly uses any, just runs on fumes somehow. And it's still quite engaging to drive with the ZF8 speed. The, the torque of the diesel, even though it's not a revy engine, you short shift and it'll pull and it'll pull and it'll pull. And look, to be fair, it is actually fast enough. You're not obviously gonna be going roll racing in it just for driving around town. It's it's quick enough, it's got enough power. Yes, and it's bloody economical. 5.9 liters per hundred, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I wish my car could do that. Now, what is yours average at the moment? 12.9 uh, or something. So you can go 2.2 the distance in this for the same amount of money. Yeah, damn. And yeah, more comfortable as well. Look, something that we do with a lot of our videos and the older cars that we review and test, um, let us know if you've got any problems with your F-Series. I know the turbos were a bit of an issue with the E90 320Ds, the, the pre-LCI models. Well, the, I think it was the actuators that play it up, but it was a very common issue. Um, yeah, so please make a comment below if you're aware of any issues with these. We'd like to share it with the world and let people know that thinking about buying one. Yeah, I guess these are coming up to that age now where a few more Issues. problems may start occurring. But for us, that about sums it up. So thank you very much for watching. And if you do have any additional info that you'd like to add or let us know, please comment below. And until the next one, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.